the issue that you seem to be getting at is basically that these kids are being told that they're inherently one way or another and kind of being being forcibly categorized and kids are being expected to accept those categories without question. Yes, and that is just that is just completely ridiculous. You can't just tell people, well, you're a racist because you're white or or you're a victim because you're black. That is just completely and totally asinine. You know, the poorest person in my family is white by by far. Okay, and I've got hundreds of people on both sides of my family. As black people, you can't tell uh, an entire race that they're being victimized by another race in a country where we have been able to excel and succeed from the very lowest point in human, you know, as a human being can be, right? So my grandmother, her father was illiterate. She has a daughter who has a PhD in education. When we were going through all of those things, all of the history and everything, photo albums and whatnot, there was a signature card for my great-grandfather, Joshua. And because he was illiterate, where he signed was just scratches. There was no actual signature. And when my aunt saw that, my aunt with a PhD in education, she cried. She cried and I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why. And I asked her, ain't Dr. Ham, because that's what I call her, ain't Dr. Ham, what, what are you crying for? And she says, you know, Grandpa Joshua was illiterate. And she just sobbed. In, in three generations, from illiterate to PhD, you can only do that in America. You can only do that in America. You know, I'm getting pins and needles uh, as you speak, actually. You know, my, my family is uh, are immigrants. I work with a lot of uh, work with a lot of immigrants, basically people that came to this country with nothing and were able to make something very much something of themselves. Um, and so I think the scenario you're describing is manifest manifests many times over for all sorts of people. You know, I was looking at a Pew Research poll recently um, that was basically looking mostly in Western countries or Westernized countries, how tolerant are people of people of other races and groupings and so forth. And, you know, America and Canada, which is my home country, uh, both were very much at the top. Again, it, curiosity in in this uh, the current scenario where we're being told that there's, you know, systemic racism and sexism and every other ism. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely things that need to be fixed, you know, and there are there is definitely room for improvement. You can't overcorrect and and take the attitude that the only way to move forward is to oppress this type of idea or to, you know, uh, break away from everything that we've known and create something something wholly different. You know, when I when my house needs needs something, you know, I, I get out some paint and paint the walls and you know what I mean, to pull out some carpentry tools and fix it. You don't go set the house on fire. You know what I mean? And this is this is what we're looking at right now. All of these people want to burn it all down. You can't you can't disassemble the uh, the master's house with the master's tools. That is nonsense. You can fix systems. You can fix things. You can utilize the tools that are already in place. That's one of the wonderful things about America. That's why everybody wants to come here. You talked about how um, families are being impacted. Like, for example, families where there's, uh, you know, a black and a white uh, a mother and father or father and mother. Um, but it, more in general, um, I've been hearing this whole ideology as having an impact on families. And I'm curious, um, in general, uh, if you've been hearing anything about this from the parents that you're speaking with. Oh, yes. I mean, what's so crazy is, is that this is not this this kind of thing is not being opposed by the people that you would typically think are opposing it. This this stuff is being opposed by parents that are Democrats, that are Republicans, black, white, Latino, gay, straight. It doesn't matter. Everybody hates this nonsense. 
because this is this is we're talking about you know regular everyday American parents do not want this in their schools for their children and no we are not co-parenting with the government we are the parents you are the educators we want our children to be educated with a classical liberal education. That's reading, uh, writing, science, math, history, right? Not social justice nonsense, not, you know, uh, active citizenship, not global, you know, whatever, okay? We want this. And if they choose to, they can ascend to the college level and learn some of these more complicated concepts, right? But I and I can tell you all of this stuff that they're trying, they're, they're talking about, and that they're spending all of this money on, you know, for social justice is taking away from actual practical education that is going to create um, the ability for all of these children to provide for themselves when they grow up. And one of the great equalizers in society is education and, and the ability to make money and to support yourself. So you're going, to, you're going to take money away from actual education and teaching you know, literacy and all of those things. So you can teach about social justice, thereby making everybody not be able to take care of themselves when they grow up? What kind of sense does that make? Who decided that? Who thought that up? It wasn't parents. So we're, we're rejecting that. You know, Victor, 